as documented on this channel and all over YouTube, Tekken 8 had a very good launch earlier in the year and a lauded reception between critics and fans alike, boasting over 2 million sales in the first couple of months, but then quickly souring in the hearts of the dedicated fan base that remained as the casuals had already moved on to the next big thing, and it became painfully obvious as suspected that we were paying to be arcade beta testers in an era where that part of the market has fallen to the sands of time and will not be making a miraculous resurrection, as is one Heihachi Mishima who will be making next week when the 1.08 update drops. Salutations denizens of the intertubes and welcome to another day in the mental asylum of the Milky Way. I am Necropants, and I have returned once again from the void to talk utter toast about my favorite video game franchise. Now, I for one have some very pointed thoughts about the fact the old man somehow survived a fall directly in a river of lava, despite his history of resilience and miraculous escapes from death and murder attempts from his various family members. I guess now it's time to concede I may have been misguided considering I have been a defender of the franchise's long-running storyline, which I always maintain was better than public perception and indeed the game itself's presentation would have you believe. But at this stage, I'll just say I'm glad he's back as a playable character and save my ultimate judgment for when I see how they have handled this in a separate video sometime next week once I go through the story portion of the update. But at 3am in Japan the other night we were graced by a developer chat that has now come commonplace since the game's launch, and it's a welcome and important feedback loop for player and developer alike, with the cantankerous Harada berating his staff not to fall asleep as we sat down to a long presentation regarding his reborn version of Hihachi Mishima, now motion captured by a Kaokushin Karate champion, apparently. And while he does look great and borderline actually broken, even though that term's used too often, with obscene pressure and stances, also, it looks like a Shoryuken-style Thunder Godfist, and to me, most annoyingly of all, all the same electric wind Godfist execution that was until this game, Kazuya's whole identity. I can only imagine what disgusting power this may unlock in the old man's arsenal when he drops next week, but I'll be sure to let you know what I find, if anything. But this patch seems to be so much more, and I'm frankly least excited about the character in contrast to all the quality of life improvements they spoke about in the showing. A lot of this stuff has either been highly requested or just makes plain common sense, and I'm happy that Namco, despite all the garbage plastic consumerism and collaborative merch branding with the likes of companies not like Nike, which could only be suspected to be Bandai Namco's desperate attempts to recoup costs from other games they appear to have lost massive amounts of money on recently, like Blue Protocol. Interestingly enough, they haven't been citing any sales numbers since that initial report, you guys noticed, which makes me think at least some people have spoken with their wallets they still continue to roll out this cross-promotional Tekken theme nonsense from clothes to toys to big rubber fists holding cyberpunk glasses to Kazuya style wall art and skateboards that I see. If they announce Jin body pillows for the next character drop this season I will not even bet an eyelid. Vote with your wallets people for God's sake. Vote with your wallets and don't encourage them. Anyway backslash rant off and on to patch 1.08. So I have some thoughts, many thoughts. So let's break down what they presented to us from the top. After the Patriarch of the Mishima's showing, they pivoted to the usual fight pass bollocks, which continues to be disappointing if not predictably so. <sighs> really this sort of crap should just be unlockables and it's mainly just cringy cosmetics that does nothing but make Tekken look cheap but it's obviously here to stay and at least they changed the predatory coin scheme last I checked, so I'll move on from this. Uh, predictable Reaper and Succubus Halloween pack for the month of October. They then moved on to go into some depth regarding Unforgotten Echoes, 
a free story expansion which documents Hihachi's return, as well as the other season one characters, Eddie and Lydia. The opening chapter, at least, was mentioned happens before the events of the release story, The Dark Awakens, and the characters contained are playable even if you don't own the DLC, which honestly is probably the only thing they can do without facing massive backlash. This left me with a big question. There is only one more character to be released in the season, and if they are not part of the story, obviously, does this mean the final character might be a guest after all? But I have to concede this does seem like a substantial story update for free to the base game, which is honestly a bit surprising, and they probably have spent a fortune on it. I counted at least six different chapters on the UI at least, as well as a redesigned interface, which fleshes out the history and seems to leave room for more. I will be interested to see how this compares to the new NRS X-Pack, which they are, of course, charging a full price expansion for. And yes, I, I do realize there's, what, six characters coming with that? But when I checked, it was about $80 in my country, and that's pretty ridiculous. That's almost a full price game. And from what I understand, that story expansion is only two hours. We will see how that compares, I guess. Tekken, on the other hand, from memory, did have about 80,000 concurrent players on Steam alone for launch. I was there, I was playing the story myself. And I suspect they have all the data of so many people playing the story, and as a reluctant Tekken story enjoyer, I still really wish they'd spent this money elsewhere. I played through the story one time on release. It's very unlikely I'll ever do it again. It just feels like a waste. But NRS and now Namco feels this works and brings in the casual audience, at least for a week or two, so whatever I guess. I just wish it was delivered with more of a gameplay focused vehicle. Next up, Nike Battle Pass sneakers and a pair of the most ridiculous glasses I've ever seen, not wielded by someone attending a P. Diddy freakout party, with the price tag to match. Uh, moving on. Next, they showed off and fulfilled the promise of a much demanded feature since the game's launch, the ability to select your favourite character costume preset for the main menu screen and mentioned that, although it seems like a simple task, indeed a few mods have popped up on the web that achieve this from their presentation, it soon becomes apparent that they have in fact spent a meticulous amount of effort making sure the characters are displayed in their best light, replete with custom lighting and facial animations, and yeah, it really does look nice. If I had some feedback, they also need to have a random option so you can set it when booting up or returning to the main screen and it chooses a random character. A little disappointing you don't appear to be able to select your options, but sorry, your customizations, but I imagine they want to portray the characters and what they feel reflects their best intended presentation, and honestly, I think that's just more ammunition that the more ludicrous customizations should be removed from the game altogether, or at least an option to disable them on your client. I know that's a bit controversial and people have accused me of being anti-fun, and I do understand people have a lot of fun with that mode, but it still tends to turn the game into a tacky gay hellscape and encourages Namco to engage further in their nonsense battle pass and monetization scheme. Next up, some battle lounge updates. You look like you're going to be able to arrange the cabinet layout in the Tekken lounge and dojo, which I would probably care a lot about if I ever went in there, and the long promised online practice mode. Again, this will be a great tool for those who run online coaching and the like, or just those dedicated to labbing with their friends. Probably won't see much use from me. I prefer to do this sort of thing alone, typically. They then talked at length regarding practice mode improvements and adjustments to the special style. The former much appreciated, and the latter I simply couldn't care less about. I have seen the argument that special style is good to get more people into the game, but I have yet to see any evidence with Tekken's implementation of it that it achieves this goal, and there really has got to be a better way, honestly. I feel all it does is teach you bad habits while neutering your offence, and then if you really want to get into the game you have to learn it all over again anyway. 
They spoke it, now adding low parry combo routes and the like, but I've always felt it's not the combos that's the problem here. We all know people who pick up the game for the first time immediately just spend two days in the lab getting bread and butters down, or at least some version of them. The issue lies with the default attacks, which ultimately leaves you with a bunch of canned tools that only serve to ensure your demise when fighting someone using the default controls. That is, of course, against anyone with any reasonable level of proficiency at the game. I don't know. I guess I'll ask you a lot. Is there any of you out there that actually uses the special style? Has any new players started with it and then graduated to normal controls in Tekken 8? Did it result you in sticking around or did you just get bored, frustrated and leave? I'm honestly curious here. Let me know in the comments below. And don't worry, I promise not to roast you for it. Lame Nike ads now decorate the town arena. Tekken 8 emblazed all over them. All a little bit electronic ass for my tastes. I mean, have they ever mentioned Tekken by itself, like in-game? Ever? It's always just been King of the Iron Fist tournament, right? Well, maybe once in the pamphlet and I've seen and that you used to get with the game, and maybe once um, a couple of times in various like animes and stuff. But you know when they're describing what Tekken actually means, but I don't think they've ever referenced it in the game. It's all very comes across very commercialized and just just, just icky. They showcase a, a bunch of uh, extra touchpad inputs on the PlayStation 5 pad for uh, shortcuts and on the screen to get to the wall and such. I hope they've kept fight sticks in mind here. And we've got options to do it on that side. Uh, health display options showing trip damage and health recovery, which is really annoying to try and track until now. And the same applied to rage arts. Good stuff. Uh, you can now choose how many hits before your opponent counterattacks. Finally, this has really been annoying me. Um, that should help uh, labbing stuff quite a bit easier. Uh, you can now cycle through categories of different moves. Heat, bound, wall splat, etc. Which, now this is amazing. Seems like something simple, but it makes picking up a new character so much easier. Uh, where you can just see all the stuff in the right place and test all the different options you have. We'll save a lot of time. The ranked system continues to be a horrendous experience, and although the plugging from my from what I can see has seemingly died down, I would argue this is the result of the majority of the casual base leaving, and not that the bans were effective at all. Really, it's just a case of Namco needing to fix the damn system. But what follows is a good step in the right direction, and at least they appear to be taking feedback. Rank restriction at plus or minus two now apparently will prioritize matching with opponents who are closer than before. And rank three makes sure only those within these ranks are matched, while no rank limit narrows the search range of ranks. I feel this is a little conservative, and ultimately the prowess-based matchmaking is the problem as it currently actively punishes you for picking up new characters. Seems like they've just been a little bit too careful here. Um, but the nonsensical point system seems to have had a much needed rethink and increases points awarded for winning against a much stronger opponent and decreases points for losing while reducing the amount of fluctuation in the points of the ranks of the opponents is four ranks or higher. We will see, have to see how this goes, but I can't help but scratch my head why it didn't work this way to begin with. Do they even play their own game? They mention considerations are being made to change the system for player retention at higher ranks. Will be interesting in what happens here going forward. Maybe leagues like Street Fighter V might be an idea. I'm honestly not sure here. After a set, we will now be able to go straight into the replay. And this is absolutely guarantees that I will be using the system a lot more to improve. It is a fantastic tool. But it's easy to forget a situation when you actively have to go back to the main menu to access it when all you want to do is fight. So quite often I will not look at my replays at all, because I'll just forget. I only wish they would also give us a friendly rematch option as well. That's not wrecked, in case you want to do a long set with the willing opponent, as death matches are a Tekken staple and sorely missing from this game. And I still can't comprehend why quick match, which is not ranked, is still only the best of three. Like, I think Tekken should be the best of five um, for a tournament level sort of match. Finals at least. Maybe even more in the finals. And quick match? Friendly matches? It makes no sense. 
the new stage with the Tekken monks looks nice with three different scenes, day, evening and night, but does not appear to contain any stage gimmicks, which is a bit of a shame. I don't know there, I'm seeing some echoes of like, like Akuma's trailer maybe? But I will not comment or speculate on this further to stave off any accusations of bigotry. More corporate wares peddling ensued, flashing their tailor-made Jin and Kazuya watches like a gypsy at a flea market. Arada made some very interesting comments uh, regarding system mechanics and the sharing that's currently going on in the fighting game development community regarding game mechanics, patents, them sharing systems to improve each other's game and licensing. Although this seems like great news to anyone's ear and... Murray spoke up saying that everyone should take a chill pill when it comes to this stuff. I personally believe video game mechanics being patented at all should be outlawed. It's bullshit and only serves to stifle the growth of an already struggling industry. More corporate bullshit, if you will. We don't need this stuff in our video games and the, the whole gaming scene was way better when it was like less mainstream. Especially when immediately after, Harada chirps in that they haven't seen any in return but have lent out quite a few. Oh, you're so wholesome, Namco. Finally, Harada encapsulated in his infamous Don't Ask Me For Shit shirt, thankfully also covered the still unresolved plugging situation, when Namco claims that they are actively working on the problem and have implemented some fixes, but they don't want to announce these things and give people ideas how to circumvent them. Check out what Mike Murray says here. <laughs> So you're just saying that uh, we actually make, we, all the feedback you send him regarding this, he's actually uh, looking at it and take it to the team. It's just that we don't announce, hey, we're doing this specific thing. Because obviously, you don't want to tell people uh, the measure, the countermeasures you're trying to implement to defeat this. Uh, but for example, you know, some instances we already have it where uh, you're, you're getting plugged on, but you don't know this because the, we actually make it look like the match finishes and you receive the points. We just don't uh, go into detail in public about when we update these things. What? I don't know, man. Sounds like a bit of a stretch or a cop-out answer to me. Because if they simply awarded the legitimate player the rank points, this behavior would disappear overnight. This claim that they already do it and to make it look like you won the match. Unless your p opponent gives up their controls completely at the end of the match, I don't see how this is possible, and it's definitely not, I've definitely not experienced it. That said, though, I never really had a big problem with pluggers. Uh, apart from, I had like a 15 win streak at some point, and that's when I started getting them. Of course, they did it to disrupt my win streak. That's the only really time I've noticed it, a handful of other times. Don't know if that's your guys' experience or you're still getting heaps. I guess that's it for now. I will reserve my judgment on the patch next week. And as I have a lot to say about the new character and such, expect a necropantic rant about that in the coming weeks. Depends on how they handle the story, but I don't really see how they can dig themselves out of this corner and make it make any sense. So just to close this off, I'll just say I probably came across overly negative in this video as a lot of my videos, but I do honestly think this patch and the last balance patch is a big step in the right direction. And apart from all the commercialized monetization nonsense, the team seem to be hard at work adding to the game, including free updates. And when all is said and done, this is probably one of the most fully featured fighting games ever made and continues to improve in substantial ways. So don't forget to sound off in the comments below if that should take your fancy. How are you guys feeling about the game and the patch? Has your shelf space been consumed with a brevy of big rubber fists, action dolls, designer sunglasses, skateboards, wall scrolls, garish watches, and Kazuya's Tinder selfie photos? As you lie in a sweaty anticipation of the announcement of the Jin and Horang life-size paired body pillows. And remember, as always, haters are welcome, and Necropants, signing out. Until I bleat again.